Oh. So over the next couple of episodes, what we're going to be focusing on now is the cell cycle. So the cell cycle overall consists of this different phases here. And you all know about these phases. If you've taken biology and you're in cell biology, obviously you've heard these uh, phases before and you understand the gist of what's going on in each phase. So you have your various growth phases. That is the G1, S phase, which is DNA replication. So where your chromosomes replicate so you have sister chromatids, which then is what we saw in anaphase A that get pulled apart. Then you have your G2 phase, again another growth phase, followed by M phase. M phase stands for mitosis. So obviously then where we have the chromosomes separating and we are basically uh, going from one cell and that's going to develop into two new daughter cells. Okay. And so what we're going to be looking at then is not necessarily each phase of the cell cycle, but what we want to understand is how does the cell know when to go into these different transitions? So how does the cell know to go from G0, the resting state, into G1? G1 into S, S into G2, and G2 into M. And it turns out that there is a common factor involved. And this factor is known as MPF, the maturation promoting factor. And what we're going to first look at is how does this maturation promoting factor get made. And what we're going to find out in the next few slides and over the next couple of episodes is that MPS, the maturation promoting factor, is a combination of two proteins that come together, a kinase and another protein called cyclin, that come together to form MPS. And these will act as signaling-like molecules, if you will, and will phosphorylate and various proteins within the cell, thus causing the cell to go through these different transitional stages of the cell cycle. So one of the first parts that we're going to look at in particular is the MPF activity responsible for stimulating cells to go from G2 and enter M phase. M phase is going to stand for mitosis. In some cases, depending on the type of cell you're talking about, it can also stand for meiosis. So meiosis, remember, is similar to mitosis and usually happens with the reproductive cells such as egg cells in females and sperm in males. Those go through meiosis and there's usually two stages of meiosis. There's meiosis 1, meiosis 2, but for all intensive purposes and throughout the series M phase will refer to mitosis. So to help us understand what this MPF activity is and what exactly it does to help again stimulate the cells to go from one phase of the cell cycle to the other we're going to be looking now at a huge series of experiments and these series of experiments are all done on the same model organism the frog egg the oocyte and what we're going to see is that these experiments showed us what MPF activity is made up of and how it stimulates the egg cell to go from G2 into M phase. Okay. So let's go into these experiments and let's take a look at how MPF develops and how it works. And how it works. Mentioned now, we're looking at a model system looking at the frog oocyte, the egg cell. We need to understand this model organism. So on the top here, top image here, is a representation of the frog egg and its natural process. So how the frog egg develops, so how it goes from G2, which is the uh, cell cycle phase right before we enter M phase, how it goes from G2 entering meiosis 1 or M phase, and then how it goes from 
being arrested halfway through M phase in meiosis two, and then getting stimulated and reactivated to enter uh, mitosis and ultimately cell division and development. So again, the top part here is showing what happens naturally within the egg without any experimental manipulation as of yet. So again, within the female frog, you have the frog oocytes. They are arrested in the G2 state. The female egg, the female uh, frog, will release a hormone, progesterone. So remember, progesterone is a hormone or a signaling hormone molecule. And what progesterone will do is that it will stimulate this oocyte to go from G2 and enter M phase. So the egg cell now goes through meiosis 1 and goes to meiosis 2. And then from the picture here, it seems as though that the egg is arrested somewhere in meiosis 2, perhaps metaphase 2 of meiosis 2. The egg stops. Now what's going to happen is that finally the female frog meets up with its male counterpart, mating occurs, and then you have fertilization. So now what happens is that when the sperm meets with the egg during fertilization, this is going to also stimulate now the egg cell to complete meiosis II and go ahead and enter mitosis, which is constant cell division. So progesterone, which is released in the female naturally, stimulates M phase, and fertilization stimulates M phase as well. So myo finishing meiosis and entering mitosis. This is important for understanding because what we're going to be looking at in many of the experiments is stimulating the egg into fertilization and seeing what happens and trying to figure out the mystery behind MPF activity, okay? this maturation promoting factor, which we're going to, as we are going to see, is actually activated somewhere during fertilization. Okay? <clears throat> so now in the bottom picture here, again using the egg as our model system, is our first major experimental manipulation. So what we're going to do here is we take an egg, so I take an oocyte that is already arrested in metaphase 2. So that means that this egg here has been stimulated, so either by progesterone or fertilization or something, so this egg has already gone from G2 into M phase. So this is arrested somewhere in meiosis too. Okay. What we're going to do then is take a needle, poke it into the oocyte, and extract the cytoplasm. Okay. So we extract the cytoplasm from the this egg one, okay, that is arrested in metaphase two or M phase. We take that needle with the cytoplasm and we inject the cytoplasm into another egg cell, another oocyte, that is at the very beginning stage. So that's arrested in G2. When we transfer the cytoplasm from egg 1 into egg 2, which again is in G2, this G2 egg gets stimulated to go ahead now and enter M phase. So now the G2 egg goes into meiosis 1 and on to meiosis 2. So right here, this first experiment tells us that there is a cytoplasmic component or factor, if you will. So some factor that exists in the cytoplasm of cells that have already entered M phase that can stimulate other cells to also enter M phase. So again, something in the cytoplasm, some factor in the cytoplasm of a cell that is already in M phase can cause another cell that is not in M phase 
to enter M phase. Okay, so that's that very initial first experimental manipulation that we're going to see.